This video will cover nonlinear models in regression analysis. At the end of this video, you should feel comfortable writing a nonlinear model so that it is linear in parameters if possible, comparing the goodness of fit across nonlinear models if appropriate, making predictions in a nonlinear model, and explaining the meaning of a slope in a linear log, log linear, or double log model. We'll start the discussion with an empirical question. Does a country's wealth improve its health? Think for a moment about the data we might use to answer this question. If we had the right information about a sample of countries, we could compare a measure of wealth to a measure of health among those countries. From the way the question is asked, we would need a measure of health as a dependent variable, as wealth potentially affects health. One common health measure used in cross-country comparisons is infant mortality rate. The first year of life is a particularly dangerous time as infants are susceptible to a variety of diseases and conditions. Infant mortality has decreased substantially in developed countries, but it has remained high in developing countries. It might be considered a proxy for a country's access to health services more broadly. The independent variable should be a measure of a country's wealth. A straightforward one is the GDP per capita. We could estimate a linear regression with these independent and dependent variables and an appropriate data set. But before we push ahead with this, it might be prudent to see what this relationship looks like graphically. Let's take a look at a scatter plot. Consider following along with the data set. The scatter plot immediately tells us that a linear model fits the data poorly. How should we go about estimating a relationship that more accurately reflects the shape we see? One strategy is to think about a familiar mathematical function whose shape appears to match what we see in the data. Let's consider three such functions. First, an inverse relationship given by this equation, where a and b are constants that could be chosen to better fit the shape of the data. Second, the logarithm function increases uh, from negative infinity to zero as the independent variable goes from zero to one, so the negative of a logarithm results in a shape similar to our data. Finally, a function where the independent variable is raised to a power could fit this shape for a negative value of the exponent b. For example, if b equals negative one-half, then y would equal a constant divided by the square root of x. For each of these functions, how would we choose a value of the constants a and b so that the function best fits the data? Ordinary least squares regression can estimate the slope and intercept of a line, but what about nonlinear models? Recall that OLS requires that models are linear in parameters. Let's see if we can make each of these models linear in the parameters and then estimate the re relationships using a regression. First, the inverse relationship is already linear in parameters. In fact, if we defined a new variable z equal to the multiplicative inverse of x and we renamed a and b to beta 1 and beta 2 respectively, we could rewrite the inverse relationship like a linear econometric model. We will try implementing this in Stata in just a moment. For the logarithm function, we can similarly define a new variable z equal to the natural logarithm of x, rename a and b to beta 1 and beta 2, and end with a linear model. The power function at first glance looks more difficult. However, some additional algebra will get us what we need. Taking the natural logarithm of both sides of the model results in this. On the right-hand side, note that the logarithm of a product is the sum of the logarithms, giving us a separate term for the log of a. Also, an exponent inside of a logarithm is the same as a multiplicative factor outside of the log, hence the b times log of x term. Here we could define two new variables, v equal to the log of y and z equal to the log of x, along with a slightly different definition of the parameters. The end result is that we can write the power function as a linear model once again. Let's now try implementing these in Stata, one at a time. Let's start with the inverse model. Infant mortality depends on the inverse of GDP per capita. In Stata, we can define a new variable equal to the multiplicative inverse of GDP per capita, and then regress infant mortality rate on the new variable. Let's take a careful look at the results. The interpretation of the coefficient is not very intuitive. 
It tells us the change in infant mortality for a one unit increase in the multiplicative inverse of GDP per capita. We'll return to this later with a more complete answer. A more straightforward way to use both the estimated coefficients is to generate a prediction. Just as in a linear model, we can predict the outcome using the estimated parameters in a given GDP per capita to perform the calculation, but we must remember to take the multiplicative inverse of GDP per capita. For instance, for a country with a GDP per capita of $20,000, the predicted infant mortality rate calculated by substituting the GDP PC variable with 20,000 is 16.5 deaths per 1,000 live births. In fact, we could repeat this prediction for many values of GDP per capita and then plot the predictions on a graph. This enables us to see the curve that describes the model and its estimated coefficients. This is the nonlinear equivalent of the best fit line. A visual inspection shows a reasonable fit for low values of GDP per capita, but the model appears to overpredict infant mortality rate for countries with higher GDP per capita. As an exercise, let's try the same with the logarithm model. Because this econometric model is linear in the dependent variable, but logarithmic in the independent variable, it is sometimes called a linear log model. Use Stata to generate any variables needed, estimate the model, and use the results to predict the infant mortality rate of a country with a GDP per capita of $20,000. You may wish to pause the video here to complete the exercise in Stata. Let's use a similar approach as the inverse model. First, create a new variable in Stata for the natural log of GDP per capita. I've chosen to add the letters LN in front of the variable name to indicate the natural log, but you can use another name if you prefer. Next, estimate the regression with the newly generated variable as the independent variable. Here are the results. We can again use the estimated parameters to generate predicted values. Plugging in a GDP per capita of $20,000, we get a predicted infant mortality rate of 6.2 per 1,000 live births. When performing this calculation, remember to take the natural log of 20,000 before multiplying by the B2 coefficient and adding the B1 coefficient. We could use a very similar procedure with the final nonlinear model we considered. This model is sometimes called a double log model because both the dependent and independent variables are inside of a logarithm. In Stata, we need to create two log variables or at least the log dependent variable if you've already created the log of the independent variable in the last example before estimating the regression. In the results, we can again use the estimated parameters to create an equation for the predicted values. If we again consider a country with a GDP per capita of $20,000, we could use the equation to predict a value. 7.73 minus 0.598 times the log of 20,000 equals 1.81. Unlike the previous models, however, this number is not the predicted infant mortality rate. It is a predicted log infant mortality rate. To calculate the predicted infant mortality rate, we must undo the log by raising e to the power of 1.81, which gives us the variable of interest, a predicted infant mortality rate of 6.1 per 1,000 live births. Now that we have estimated a variety of nonlinear models, we might ask which one best fits the data. We will also compare all of these to a linear model. A familiar statistic describing goodness of fit is R squared, which is avail available in the output for each of the models we estimated. Let's interpret these values to make a comparison. The first value indicates that GDP per capita explains 28% of the variation in infant mortality. Next the inverse of GDP per capita explains 45% of the variation in the same outcome, and the natural log of GDP per capita explains 59% of the variation in the outcome. Of these first three models, it seems fair to say that the linear log model best fits the data, as the independent variable explains the greatest proportion of variation in infant mortality. What about the double log model? The R-squared value indicates that the log of GDP per capita explains 74% of the variation in the log of infant mortality.
Although this model does have a higher R squared than the other three, that R squared means something different. Explaining variation in the log of the outcome is not quite the same thing as explaining variation in the outcome itself. Accordingly, we should avoid drawing comparisons between the double log model and others because they have different outcomes. Researchers have proposed alternative methods of comparing models with different dependent variables, but they are not trivial and we will not cover them here. Instead, we will simply emphasize that R squared values are comparable only if the dependent variable is the same. Now we can make predictions in a nonlinear model and also compare the goodness of fit of models with the same dependent variable. But let's revisit the interpretation of the estimated coefficients themselves, focusing on the models with one or more logarithms. For our linear log model, we can interpret the slope coefficient literally to mean that for each one unit increase in the log of GDP per capita, infant mortality decreases by 12.1 per 1,000 live births. But what does it mean to have a one unit increase in the log of GDP per capita? Recall a few properties of the natural logarithm. Adding 1 to the natural log of x is the same as multiplying x by e, the natural log base, approximately equal to 2.718. So an alternative explanation of the coefficient is that if GDP per capita increases by a factor of e, infant mortality decreases by 12.1 per 1,000 live births. This is an improvement as it's probably easier to think in terms of a multiplicative factor than it is to think of an increase in a log, but the factor of e is not particularly intuitive. Let's take this one more step. We can also use the coefficient to say that for a 0 0.01 unit increase in the log of GDP per capita, infant mortality decreases by 0 0.121 per 1,000 live births. Here, I've simply multiplied the coefficient by 0 0.01 to find the effect of a smaller increase in the independent variable. So what does it mean to have a 0.01 unit increase in the log of GDP? Adding 0.01 to the natural log of x is the same as multiplying x by e to the power of 0.01. But e to the power of a small number is approximately equal to 1 plus that number. This approximation comes from the first order Taylor expansion of the exponential function, which is fairly accurate for values close to zero. So this means that adding 0.01 to the log of x is the same as multiplying x by 1.01, which is also the same as increasing x by 1%. Now we can give a much more intuitive explanation of the coefficient. If GDP per capita increases by 1%, infant mortality decreases by 0 0.121 per 1,000 live births. Let's try one final interpretation using the double log model. Because the independent variable is again logged, let's again multiply the coefficient by 0.01. For each 0.01 unit increase in the log of GDP per capita, the log of the infant mortality rate decreases by 0 0.00598. We know from before that a 0.01 unit increase in GDP per capita is the same as a 1% increase in GDP per capita. Now what about a 0.00598 unit decrease in the log of infant mortality? Using the approximation as we did for GDP, we can multiply this value by 100 to get a percentage change. So if GDP per capita increases by 1%, the infant mortality rate decreases by 0.598%. This language should also sound like a familiar economic concept, elasticity. Recall that the elasticity of y with respect to x is the percent change in y divided by the percent change in x. Elasticity is commonly used to describe consumers or producer responsiveness to price, but the idea can also be applied in other areas such as this one. So we could also say that the elasticity of infant mortality with respect to GDP per capita is negative 0.598. Note that this value is also the coefficient. This is true for any double log model. The coefficient is the elasticity of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable.